Using artificial intelligence, medical researchers say that they have now developed a new antibiotic that is effective against a drug-resistant bacteria. It's an exciting discovery, and here with more is Dr. Isaac Bogosh, who joins us on this Monday. Doctor, always good to see you, and what can you tell us about this new antibiotic and the role that AI has played in its development? Yeah, this is fascinating, Jeff. The, the name of the bacteria is called Acinetobacter baumani. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's a really nasty infection, and it is quite resistant to most antibiotics. It causes sometimes quite devastating lung infections and skin infections, and new antibiotics to treat this are essential. And what the scientists did was they looked at the structure of this particular bacteria and they used AI to really help inform them of how best to attack this structure and how best to not just penetrate the structure but look at the inner workings of it to develop an antibiotic that could that could treat this really really challenging infection and they found a really good antibiotic to do this and the interesting thing is the antibiotic is actually a narrow spectrum antibiotic. It doesn't it doesn't appear that it will work on a lot of other bacteria, just this bacteria. You think, well, that's not a good idea, but the, it actually is a good idea because this way it's laser focused on this particular infection and you don't have uh, the potential to develop uh, antibiotic resistance, or I guess I should say less potential to develop antibiotic resistance to this particular antibiotic. So this is an incredible development, and I think we'll see a lot more AI in the future to help with drug discovery. Well, I was just going to say, is this just the beginning when it comes to AI and medicine? Will artificial intelligence help us discover new drugs and possibly cure diseases? Absolutely. It absolutely will. And in fact, we're already starting to see AI integrated into medical practice. Uh, you're seeing a little bit of it in the fields of radiology and pathology and even oncology. Uh, but I think we're going to watch this into well integrated into many other areas of medicine. And I don't think this is something that's going to, for example, replace doctors, but I think it will just really help with things like you mentioned, drug discovery, uh, honing our treatment for various uh, for various diseases. And I, I think we'll see more and more of this in the future. All right. I want to get right. to the latest on uh, Omicron and the latest Omicron variant, XBB. It is fueling, Dr. Bogosh, a new wave of COVID cases in China. Just how bad is this wave and just how concerned should we all be? Yeah, I mean, we've had multiple Omicron waves in Canada. The first one was was extraordinarily challenging, uh, and that was in the early winter of 2022. Since then, we've had other subvariants of Omicron uh, come through Canada, and of course, they all cause waves. And sadly, some people end up in hospital, and sadly, some people succumb to this illness. And we should be taking steps to protect ourselves and to protect the community. But what we've seen is subsequent waves of Omicron have not been as challenging as the initial uh, wave of Omicron in Canada, at least from a healthcare utilization standpoint. So again, we never want to underplay the significance of, of COVID. We know it can be a uh, very challenging infection, especially for people with greater risk factors or for, for risk factors for more severe illness. But I don't think that this is going to cause uh, what we saw earlier on in the pandemic with hospitals overwhelmed uh, and, and, and that degree of um, the significance. But having said that, you know, we have a high degree of vaccination. We have a high degree of infection and recovery from infection. I'm not saying we want people to get infected. I'm just saying we, we can't ignore that this hybrid immunity has provided us with some significant community level protection. So something to watch out for. Let's take steps to protect ourselves from getting this infection, but let's not pretend that we're going to see scenes like we did earlier on in the pandemic here in Canada. All right. Uh, a new U.S. study says 10 percent of people suffer long COVID after an Omicron infection. We've talked about this before, but like anything, it changes. We learn more. So what more are we learning about long COVID? Yeah, I, I mean, this is something we should take seriously. And we've known for so many years that you can have more chronic manifestations following acute infection. We've known this before COVID. And of course, we're seeing that with COVID as well. You know, I, I, I really do wonder what the true prevalence of this issue is we have difficulties with definitions and, and measuring uh, long COVID in a standardized manner, which is troubling. Having said that, I think that it's pretty clear that this is 
rather heterogeneous. There's lots of different mechanisms to have longer term symptoms following acute infection. And some of the research is pointing into vasculature, neurologic issues, other uh, issues with other part of the body, other parts of the body. And it's really important to really have a good understanding of what's happening inside so that you can really develop better diagnostic tests and better therapeutic uh, tools to help manage this because it, it's going to be an ongoing issue. All right, just finally, Dr. Bogosh, it has been a difficult start to the allergy season, and experts are saying that climate change is the cause, that allergy cases are on the rise as there's more pollen in the air for longer periods of time? Yeah, I think this has been extraordinarily challenging for those who suffer from allergies. And what you see with warmer climate and warmer temperatures is that not only is the time duration of pollen season extended, and that can be extended by up to three weeks in some places, but some plants are actually releasing even more pollen as well. So you've got a longer season plus more pollen out there, which really translates into a tougher allergy season uh, for, for many people. And, and, and sadly, this is, this is one of the many manifestations we see of our warming climate. All right, we're going to leave it there on this Monday. Dr. Bogosh, thank you for dropping in. My pleasure. Have a great day.